Touch the Lake, you're watching Tibet this week, a weekly feature that provides a preview of this week's news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Central Tibetan Administration. Last Wednesday, a week before the United Nations Human Rights Council opens its 2017 session with China starting a new three-year term, human rights defender, escaped activist and niece of Tugu Tenzi Telek Rinpoche, Nimal Hamo, addressed the 9th Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy session on the fight for freedom and democracy. Nimal Hamu represented Tibet along with other guest speakers from Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Russia, Vietnam and other countries. Nimal Hamo moved the 300-plus audience, including United Nations diplomats, human rights NGOs, by narrating personal anecdotes of her life in Tibet and why she risked her own life and her family to speak about her uncle Tugu Tenzi Delek Rinpoche, a renowned Tibetan spiritual leader who was tortured to death in Chinese prison in the year 2015. Here's the video of Nimal Hamo speaking at the Geneva Summit. Good afternoon, everyone. I thank the UN Watch for giving me the opportunity to speak at the summit. I come from a nomadic family in Kham, Eastern Tibet. I left my six-year-old daughter and my mother back in Tibet. I've sacrificed a lot with hope in the international community. The reason why I sacrificed and risked my own life and that of my family is because the Chinese authorities imprisoned my uncle, Tenzin Delik Rinpoche, under false and fabricated charges. He died in Chinese prison during the 13 year in detention. My uncle was arbitrarily arrested at the midnight of 7th April 2002 from his monastery and the trump up charges of being involved in bomb plus. At the time of my uncle's arrest, I was only 12 years old. I was hopeful he would be released soon since he committed no crime at all. However, I was wrong. My uncle was in prison for 13 years and died in Chinese prison. While in prison, my uncle recounted his experience of torture in prison and told my mother that the prison authorities subjected him to severe torture and met him subconsciousness. The prison authorities repeatedly beat him and called his title and asked him to display spiritual power. My uncle did not show any hatred or anger towards oppressor. Instead, he practiced compassion and advised my mother and me to do the same. My uncle did not commit any crime. He said his only crime was his loyalty and devotion to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So he appealed, requested my mother to find justice for him. Ever since my uncle's imprisonment, my uncle and local Tibetans have put all our efforts to secure his release. My family and local Tibetans are not financially strong. However, we traveled all the way to Beijing and Sitton. We appeal for an independent and fair trial. We asked for medical parole. But but all these efforts were in vain. Instead, my family and local Tibetans have been subjected to harassment, crackdowns, and many were arrested while demanding justice for my uncle. Many Tibetans sustained injuries from gunshot. We suffered a lot. My uncle's effort to preserve Tibetan cultural identity. There, were, there is no school, so Tibetan. My uncle set up schools, and he built old people's home. 
and he set up school for orphans, and he built so many monasteries, and he worked towards the preservation of Tibetan's environment. So these have recognized him not just as spiritual leader, but also as an environmentalist and social worker who devoted his entire life to serve the interests and well-being of Tibetan nomadic families. I clearly remember the day. It was on 2nd July 2015, 10 days before my uncle's death. Much to our surprise, we were contacted by the prison authorities and told that we could meet him. Hence, my mother and Arnold left immediately to see my uncle. However, after reaching there, the prison authorities kept postponing the visit for 10 days at around 10 p.m. on July 12, 2015. My uncle, my mother and aunt were informed of my uncle's death. So I was shocked and immediately left for Chengdu. After reaching there, we were denied the opportunity to see his body. And also ashes were not returned to my family. Therefore, my mother, my aunt, and I, with some local Tibetans, staged protests against the authority and demand the return of body. I even attempted to kill myself. And I thought if I commit suicide, this would attract international attention. And my mother and I were detained. And my mother and I were detained and accused that we had committed a serious crime. We were also warned of the poss possibility of being sentenced to life imprisonment. And to our surprise, after a few days, we were told that told to sign a document accepting the three conditions to secure our release. But we refused to sign the documents because we told Tenzin Delik is not only my uncle, he is spiritual leader for all Tibetans. Then they came out with document and saying that one of our village leaders had signed the condition on our behalf. That conditions were no information on Tenzin Delik shall be shared in Tibet. No accusation shall be made against the Chinese authorities that Rinpoche had died of poisoning. No discussion on Rinpoche's death at any public gathering and to the outside world. And we were strictly instructed to follow the direction. This is how actually we secured our release from prison. The Chinese authorities continue to dishonor my uncle in various manner, even after his death. They distributed pamphlets and propagate false and distorted information on state television saying Tenzin Delik Rinpoche is a fake religious leader, a criminal, and he was a threat to so-called social stability. My family and local Tibetans were banned from offering traditional butter lamp and organizing pub public prayer in memory of my uncle. The Chinese authorities are trying to manipulate the reincarnation of my uncle like the authorities they did in the case of Levin Panchen Lama, Gintin Shui Photos of my uncle were banned in Litang. Chinese authorities have confiscated all belonging of my uncle. So Chinese authorities hope that the case of my uncle will disappear now. Whatever challenges I may face, I am committed to call the international community to investigate into the case of my uncle and situation in Tibet. I urge international community who stand for human rights, freedom and justice to thoroughly investigate and press and question China why did neither my uncle's body nor his ashes were returned to my family? Why did they cremate my my uncle's dead body immediately with sec heavy security. 
The distress and trauma that my family has been subjected to since my uncle arrived is just one of many cases in Tibet. Tibetans in Tibet are aspiring for this kind of opportunity, a free space to share the grievances. And they place lots of hope on international community. And there is no space for Tibetans in Tibet to share this kind of freedom. I one second would like to say thank you very much for listening to me. Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy is sponsored by a coalition of 25 human rights NGOs from around the world. This annual conference builds on the success and momentum of the previous gatherings which have been widely acclaimed in the international human rights community. That is all for today. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.